so welcome everyone uh, to the session today so this session is uh, basically for all the sisa aspirants to give them a grip as to how they have to attempt a sisa question so there is always a gap where they feel difficulty in attempting a question so there is a some kind of a fear so to just get out of the fear and to understand how they have to read the question how they have to attempt so this session we will take up some practice questions and will i will explain it to you as how to how you have to go through the question how you have to attempt how you have to read the question and what is the process that you should follow during the process of attempting the answers yeah so uh, to give a brief introduction about uh, me i am uh, ashwini shrinath so i had been um, into finance background i am a chartered accountant and i have been into the field for uh, 11 years so post which the last 3 years i found interest for information security and i had been quite interactive with uh, cisa aspirants after me clearing uh, cisa and uh, i had been a trainer with infosec for past one one year so that's an introduction about me so let's uh, read the question now so an uh, auditor finds that a system under development has 12 linked modules and each item of data can carry up to 10 definable attribute fields the system handles several million transactions a year which of these techniques could an is auditor use to estimate the size of the development effort program evaluation review technique functional point analysis counting source lines of the code white box testing so in this option so let's analyze the question so this question is from domain 3 so this question is from domain 3 which speaks on the software size estimation so on the software size estimation there are two points where there is sloc and fpa so sloc is single line of code and function point analysis is fpa yeah so on these two points are relating to the software size development or size estimation of the software size so those to under these two options you have to find on the best option whether it is fpa or counting the source of line so pert and white box testing not relevant for this question at all so pert and ever we pert and white box testing they relate to problem or project management technique not related to uh, software size estimation so fpa and sloc it, these two are relating to the software size estimation however the question makes it very clear the keyword here is that there are million transactions that are carried on throughout the year so in that where there is a complex software that is developed a single line of code cannot be used only the functional point analysis can be used so that is how you are going to implement your knowledge that you have learned so in this case fpa is the right answer functional point analysis is the right answer or i can read the justification here as to uh, it is given so correct answer is b pert review technique is a project management technique which is used in the planning and control of system projects fpa is a technique used to determine the size of development task below based on the number of functional points functional points are the factors such as inputs outputs inquiries and logical internal sites the number of source code lines gives a direct measure of program size but it allows for the complexity that is caused by multiple link modules and variety of inputs and outputs white box testing involves a detailed review of behavior of program code it is quality assurance technique suited to simpler applications during the design and building stage of development so read the question digest the question then understand or identify the keyword which domain is it from then and what the question is relating to what what is the keyword then eliminate the wrong options with proper justification then finalize on the right option which of the following is the greatest concern for an it auditor when performing an audit of client relationship management system migration project a technical migration that is planned on a friday preceding a long weekend and the time window is too short for completing the task employees pilot testing system are connected that the data representation in the new system are concerned that the data representation in the new system is completely different from the old system a single implementation is planned immediately decommissioning the new system five weeks prior to the target date there is still numerous defects in the printing functionality of the new system software so this question is specifically on domain 3 so which is relating to the system migration so system migration technique is the concept behind which the question is built on so on the system or change over technique of the system there are various types where parallel change over or a direct cut over or a phased manner so in that case more riskier one is that when you move from a old system to the new system immediately where it is called as a direct cut over or immediate change over so in that case the risk is more 
much for the organization so that is the case where the auditor should be having more concern with so c is the right answer for this question where a single plan is or a single implementation is planned immediately decommissioning the new system so c is the right answer for this question so a weekend can be used a on the option a weekend can be used as a time buffer so that the new system will have a better chance of being up and running after the weekend a different data representation doesn't mean that different data presentation at the front end even when this is the case this issue can be solved by adequate training and support major system migrations should include a phase of parallel operation or a phase cutover to uh, reduce implementation risk decommissioning or disposing of the old hardware would complicate any fallback plan strategy should the new system printing functionality is common for one of the last functions to be tested in a new system because it is usually the last step performed in any business event that is meaningfully testing and respect to error fixing are only possible after all the system software has been successfully tested now yeah, so on this question this is the right answer on having a single plan uh, implementation immediately decommissioning the new system is the right answer for this so moving to the next question so when identifying an early project completion time which is to be obtained by paying a premium for early completion the activity should be selected by those whose a option a whose sum of activity time is the shortest those have zero slack time that give the longest possible completion time whose sum of slack time is the shortest so in this question this relates to project or this relates to domain 3 domain 3 it relates to uh, doing or relating to your completion of the project or the project progress so which relates to cpm and pert so under cpm this question relates to slack time so slack time is an important concept that you should understand as part of domain 3 so to attempt this question you should know what is a slack time so slack time is something is that the time by which the previous process so the, it kind of carries on the project so if you consider a specific project there will be various stages in the project you will have stage 1 to stage 10 to achieve the project so first stage 1 should be completed to move to the stage 2 that is what is a project uh, progress that you do so in this question they are saying that there is a completion time that is set and you have to complete that specific project within the earliest time that is possible so what you have to do so there are various activities so these activities should be selected so those are the activities the stage 1 to stage 10 is the activities they are speaking on so what they have to do to ensure that the project is completed on time so under this there is something called as a slack time slack time is that it means that the time which by which the previous process can be delayed so that it doesn't impact the overall progress of the project or completion of the project meaning the stage one has to be completed in three days so from the after three days completion the, the next stage it will go to stage two so even if the three days is delayed by one day it is not going to impact the overall closure of the project it can be completed within the aforesaid or within the criteria that it is set so that is what is called as a slack time the previous activity can be delayed by so much day so that it does not impact the next stage or completion of the project that is what is called as a slack time so there is a critical path that is defined so a critical path is defined as something that has a zero slack time so critical path is that you cannot delay the specific process even by a minute or even by a second if it is delayed by a minute or a second it will impact the overall closure of the project so that is called as the critical path so the the concept behind critical path is that activities on critical path has zero slack time or no slack time meaning that if it is in a critical path that should be completed on time there should not be any delay that is what is a phrase means activity in a critical path has zero slack time on the other way around if a path or if there is a zero slack time in a path it is called as a critical path so here it is very clear that the project should be completed on time and it should be completed within the earliest time that is possible that is a clue or that is a keyword so when it is to be completed within the shortest time then it has to be completed through a critical path if it has to be completed in the critical path then there should not be any slack time behind that so this concept should be very clear to understand the concept and then implement the concept in the question 
so attention should be on the task within the critical path that has zero slack time so b a critical path activity is longer than that of any other path through the network the path is important because if everything goes as per schedule its length gives the shortest possible completion time for the overall projects activities on critical path become candidates or candidates the for crushing that is reduction in the time by payment of premium for early completion activities on critical path have zero slack time and conversely activities with zero slack time are part of the critical path by successfully relating the activities on critical path a curve should showing the total project cost versus the time should be obtained yeah so that is the concept behind this question so c option is not right cpm is the or critical path is the longest time length activities but is not based on the longest time of an individual activity d a task on critical path has zero slack time yeah so that is the option on it so understand the concept behind the question is very important so this is more of applying the concept that you have learned so everything every question will be a concept based and there is a scenario that is built and you're supposed to take a decision based on the options yeah so b is the right answer for this question an is auditor is reviewing a organization's recovery strategy or recovery from a disaster in which not all critical data needed to resume the business operations were retained which of the following was incorrectly defined interruption window recovery time objective service delivery objective recovery point objective so on this question this question is relating to drp so which is part of domain 4 so on this the concept that is behind is on rpo and rto so what is rpo rto to know that it is very important to attempt this question on rpo recovery point objective it relates to data loss recovery time objective it relates to the downtime so what is the maximum kind of a data loss that the organization can bear with is dealt by rpo what is the maximum tolerable downtime and the organization can bear with is defined as per the rto so these two are set by the organization before in hand so so that in the case of any uh, disaster they can decide accordingly what is the nature of site they can have what is the nature of backup that they can decide on so this question is relating to critical data so the keyword is on the critical data that needs to be included when it is relating to critical data it relates to the data loss so what is the data loss that needs to be defined so in that case the question or the answer is very clear or relating to recovery point objective so to understand or to write on recovery point on which you know you should need to the you need to know the concept behind the rpo and rto so what is an interruption window interruption window is the time from the disaster point till the time that is uh, operations are carried on at the alternate side so that is an interruption window interruption is that there is a disturbance and there is a disturbance window so during that interruption window the system is not unavailable there is no process that has got carried on meaning the system has crashed uh, the system the server has crashed by 10:30 and by 11 o'clock you have started the uh, operations or the critical operations in the alternate side then the time between 10:30 to 11 11 so that time is called as the interruption window so we are not speaking about that so recovery time objective it speaks on the downtime of the system so that relates to rpo service delivery objective it defines on what is the level of service that you need to carry on at the time of a disaster so that is a minimal level of service that you need to carry on at the time of disaster which is service delivery objective so now you justify each of the option as wrong based on an understanding that is very important why this option is wrong so justify that then you eliminate so recovery point objective speaks on the uh, data loss so here it speaks on all critical data that needs to to resume operations when they are retained so that is mean you have identifying a critical data which deals with the what is the type of a data loss that you can have so from this it is very clear that option d is the right answer which relates to data loss the organization can bear with so d is the right answer for this question So that is the questions that I have now. So hope uh, with this you will be able to attend at least uh, at, have an understanding as to how you have to read a question, how you have to attempt a question, how you have to justify the question, and how is that you have to prepare yourself for the concepts. Thanks everyone.